I'll, I'll start by saying I appreciate uh, Dave recognizing that that cellular that the uh, SCI PR policy doesn't require licensing at the component level, which it doesn't. Um, I disagree that the IEEE policy before 2015 uh, required licensing other than at the device level. It doesn't require multi-level licensing at all, but the policy was changed, so that's only that only matters for older standards. Um, in terms of does licensing inhibit cellular, I don't think there's any evidence of that. I'd, I'd, I'm very, I would very much like to see some company come publicly out and say, no, we were going to do use cellular in this product, but uh, we were afraid or something happened and so we didn't. I don't think that, I don't think that happens. Um, cellular has grown enormously over the years. It's grown into new areas and um, that has, licensing has never inhibited uh, that to any material degree. Uh, in terms of why there are disputes, there, there are disputes because there can be a lot of money involved. The, the companies you hear most raising quote unquote concerns about IoT cellular licensing are companies that make cellular phones, cellular smartphones. And why are they doing that? They're not doing that because they care about IoT. They're doing that because they're trying to drive down the value of patents so that they can pay less for their smartphones. Um, the quote unquote patent wars, what are they about? Right? They, they were historically about smartphones. Now there's a dispute between one car company, Daimler, and one licensor, Nokia, uh, that's going on. Um, but that's in an environment where other car companies have taken licenses from Avanci. That's in an environment where um, Qualcomm has a great number of licenses for vehicles uh, at the at upstream levels, at tier ones, and even more upstream than that. Um, and so the patent wars or the litigation might get a lot of might get a lot of play and a lot of attention, but the can, it's always the possibility of litigation when there's a lot of money involved because at some, at sometimes people will see it in their interest to try new things to try to pay less. We're, we're seeing now the end of or the resolution of a holdout strategy that has persisted for about 10 years, maybe a little bit more, where courts are finally saying no to a lot of the holdout tactics that were used in smartphones and that are being attempted in cars. And you see courts actually labeling people as unwilling licensees when, when they engage in those tactics. So I think that there's, there's not a lot to the notion that IoT is going to be inhibited by licensing because people are rational commercial actors. Just, just because, um, I mean, um, one question, the, the auto industry is perceived to be the first one that dealt with this. And we have now first court decisions coming in. That's, I think, quite interesting. Um, however, there's a lot of people that argue that we have so many use cases in IoT. How do we find agreement on, on price? Um, well, it really depends on where the patented technology is used in the product. Um, and, and will this always, to a certain extent, cause somehow complexity or challenges uh, to get access to SEP licenses? So in general, no. It's, um, you have to look at, you have to look at a, a few things. One is I agree that the appropriate price depends on the use case because that, that determines what the value of the technology brings. Um, I don't think that's really that controversial a topic. That's, that's a, that's a, that's a concept that's enshrined in the law, at least U.S. patent law. Um, there are people out there, the smartphone people are out there advocating um, that, the, that the price of cellular technology should be at the lowest common denominator. So what, it, what this value cellular brings when you put it in a vending machine should be what, what uh, they pay for use in their smartphones. 
I think the, P, the IoT industry, the people who work in IoT should recognize the danger of that to them. Because if we recognize, if licensors recognize that cellular brings less value to their applications and therefore are willing to charge them less, because that's economically efficient and appropriate and fair, um, but doing so means that the smartphone people get a free ride, then that's not going to work. That's just, that's just simply not going to work. So in general, because people are rational actors, licensing in IoT will proceed in an orderly way. It's not going to be a situation where big licensors are, are, are trying to inhibit the marketplace. That We have no interest in doing that. Uh, and I don't think there's going to be a lot of licensing activity at first in IoT, where people are going to wait for the market to shake out. 